So I want to show you a uh, new method of constructing a uh, single biquad antenna. Now this is for 2.4 gigahertz. I am going to do one for uh, 5.8 gigahertz for FPV, and I'll probably also do one uh, a little bit later for the uh, 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi as well. But uh, in this video, it's just for the uh, 2.4, and basically, it's just a different method of uh, constructing the uh, biquad elements that you may find easy. Now I've shown in the past, in past videos, although I haven't made one for quite some time, how uh, it's uh, relatively easy and a lot more accurate to construct your element if you use uh, something like this. This is a little piece of plastic that is exactly 31.25 millimeters long and that's a quarter wavelength we need for each one of the uh, biquad elements here and I've shown you how to use this in combination with uh, some pliers like these ones here to get it as accurate as you possibly can rather than going out with a sharpie marker and a ruler and measuring each quarter wavelength off uh, individually you can make a lot of mistakes that way but uh, this time we're going to use some tubing here now this is a uh, three millimeter copper tubing and we're going to use that to construct our elements and then we're going to feed this uh, thinner copper wire here through the elements and basically that will hold everything together this one is one that i tried previously this has got aluminium uh, tubing on here because you don't actually need to solder directly to this either and uh, it just holds everything in place and it keeps its shape much better and another reason i wanted to build this as well is because i've got a 8 watt amplifier coming from uh, china 8 watts uh, of power and uh, i wanted something a little bit more st substantial to generate and uh, you know propagate the 8 watts of power out of rather than uh, you know just a simple thin wire by quad like uh, i would make using uh, this wire because you need a much thicker material if you're going to up your watches like that and uh, you know you can use this uh, for wi-fi but you could also use it for fpv if uh, you're using uh, you know 2.4 gigahertz for your video signal or whatever these uh, bi quad uh, antennas are one of my favorites they're a good all-round antenna they're not the best um you know over distance by no means but they just tick a lot of the boxes you know when it comes to how wide uh, they operate over and uh, the range and everything else and how easy they are to build as well so to start off with then i'm going to measure and cut my uh, tubing here and i need eight elements all together and these elements need to be 31.25 millimeters long now to start off with i'm not going to try and measure that 31.2 millimeters all in uh, one go i'm basically going to cut the lengths off at 35 millimeters and then we can go in and trim them all the way down after we've cut them with a uh, file etc to really take it down to get it as precise as we can for 31.25 uh, uh, millimeters and uh, another thing that's really good about the uh, biquad element as well especially at 2.4 gigahertz is it's a very forgiving design so if you get a couple of elements that are just not quite 31.25 millimeters you will still have a uh, working biquad antenna and it will still perform pretty well so in that respect it's a uh, very forgiving antenna and that's why uh, i do say that it's probably one of the best ones you can uh, have a go at uh, doing yourself at home so I'm just going to measure off eight uh, elements then, 35 millimeters long. Just cut them off uh, with a hacksaw. So I've got all my elements marked off on my uh, tubing here. And I forgot to mention the uh, tubing is uh, 300 millimeters in length. So it's uh, three millimeters in diameter, 300 millimeters in length. And I get a little bit of spare on the end here, but we will be using some of that later on in the build so i'm just going to get a hacksaw blade put this in the vise and just uh, cut off each one of these elements so now that i've got all my elements uh, roughly cut here i need to uh, take them down to 31.25 millimeters now i could use a ruler mark each one off at uh, that measurement and then use a file to remove the uh, excess copper from there until we've got it spot on as a measurement but that's very time consuming doing eight 
also uh, doing eight like that uh, you know you can have errors not everyone's going to be exactly the same so uh, when I did I built myself a uh, very simple jig here two pieces of wood and uh, some paper in between to make the measurement up so I got exactly 31.25 millimeters deep and uh, I made that up with paper because I found that much easier to get the uh, measurement spot on and I've just blocked off this end with an old piece of PCB so the uh, rods don't fall down directly through there but uh, I can insert these in here now and then uh, take them down to the uh, level of this piece of wood here I can do all of them in uh, one go and then I've got my measurements exactly spot on 31 0.25 millimeters so what I'm going to do first is get my file get a nice flat edge on this side here and then insert each one and then take all those measurements down by uh, popping this in the vise and then using my uh, file here of course this has only got a uh, finite uh, amount of uh, life in it because eventually I'm going to be removing some of this wood with the file so we'll get it pretty uneven but I'm pretty sure I can make uh, quite a few uh, of these uh, elements using a jig like this before I have to think about uh, replacing it so now I've got the jig held securely in the vise so I can just take my uh, file here and just gently file them down so now that they're all ground down I know that they're all the same size 31.25 uh, millimeters so I can just pop these out and then just get rid of any burring that may be around the uh, edges here so now you can see why I used a piece of PCB so I don't have to remove all of this uh, plate here. I can just pop it out from one side and use a uh, stick to just poke them back through. So it's really worthwhile taking the time to uh, make the jig because uh, to be honest with you to get them all the same size it, you probably waste as much time with a sharpie marker the file and a ruler trying to get them the, all the same size anyway it just saves a lot of time in the long run so we're going to start putting everything together now and make the uh, biquad element now i'm going to thread my tubes onto this copper wire here this is about uh, one millimeter thick i uh, got this from some uh, earthing cable here i just stripped it back and uh, straightened out a piece of the uh, copper wire from that but uh, I've got myself a decent length probably a lot longer than what I actually need so I've put a right angle bend in on this end here and now I'm going to start threading my uh, tubes onto here so I've got the first two tubes threaded onto the uh, copper wire here and I'm going to put the first bend in now and uh, I've got this first one butted up against this right angle bend and I'm going to uh, keep the copper uh, wire here quite taut with my other fingers and I'm going to just apply a little bit of pressure between these two tubes here and I'm going to put my first bend in there just like so now what I've done I've locked this tube in place now this can't go anywhere this one is still free to move but when I put the third tube in place it will then lock this tube in place then and we can carry on going with the rest of the elements so threading the third one on and again exactly the same keeping the uh, copper wire quite taut a little bit of pressure in between the two tubes and then put the next bend in place so with this bend now we've got these two locked in place this one it can still move about so now I'm going to feed the fourth tube down so once we've got the fourth tube in place what I'm going to do now is put a right angle bend in here keeping everything as tight as I can to lock that tube in place and then what I'm going to do is bend it back on itself again and get some pliers and nip that in a little bit and now that I've got it into uh, this position here I'm going to add some solder to this leg here to uh, lock it in position and then put a right angle bend on here and then start adding the other four tubes so as you can see I've just put a little bit of solder on that leg to keep them together not too much and I've also gone ahead and put a right angle bend in here and uh, bent it off to the side as well and now I'm just going to carry on feeding the rest of the elements in to complete the biquad element so that's all of the uh, tubes now fed onto the copper wire so what I'm going to do now is uh, bring these two ends together and add a little bit of solder and I'm also going to make sure that this leg is about 20 millimeters long just to give me 
plenty of room to play with so I'm just going to dab a little bit of solder on there just like I did with the previous leg just to hold them together so there's one last thing I want to do to the elements before we move on to the reflector and I've got a length of the uh, leftover copper tube in here and I've measured that off at uh, 14 millimeters long and I'm going to uh, use it like a solder cup I've uh, already cut down this part of the element here added a little bit more solder to this I'm going to pre-tin this as well and I'm basically going to solder this uh, piece of tubing onto here and that will give us a good connection then to the uh, reflector and the SMA connector that we're going to use so for the reflector I'm going to use some single sided PCB this is a pretty cheap PCB it measures 100 millimeters by 70 millimeters you can buy a pack of 10 of these for around four or five pounds off eBay and uh, I've just drawn across here from the corners to find the center and I've drilled a small hole either side of the center because I don't want to drill a hole directly in the center and I've got myself uh, a little SMA connector here a little bulkhead one like I use on the cantennas and uh, I've already pre-prepared it with a little solder cup here and uh, I've cut away one of the corners because I'm going to I'll flip this over this way I'm going to solder it directly onto the back of the PCB here so it's uh, grounded and I'm going to have uh, one of the uh, little legs on the biquad coming through there and solder it to the uh, opposite end of uh, the PCB here on the back and I've cut away one of the uh, you know the corners on this SMA connector just so I can bring the two points quite close together because that way I'll have a uh, much better VSWR if you have them quite wide apart it does uh, tend to drift so that's what I've done to modify it pretty simple but uh, what I want to show you now is a little trick because I don't want this uh, pin here to ground out to the back there and short out and if I solder it in place there with the uh, solder cup coming through it will probably be grounded out but there's a little trick you can do uh, to uh, remove some of the copper here now because I've already drilled a hole I'm going to use a wood screw uh, now a wood drill bit sorry and I'm going to uh, position that in that little hole there and just uh, do a couple of turns of this just to remove the top layer of the PCB it leaves a little circle of the top layer removed there and that way I'm not going to be grounding my pin out when I uh, connect the SMA connector on to the back here So I'm about to solder on the SMA connector to the uh, back reflector now but I've gone ahead and put a couple of posts in here to help uh, support the uh, biquad elements. Now I've uh, measured these off at 14 millimeters, and uh, then when you take into account that the dielectric is uh, about a millimeter thick so we're looking at uh, just over 15 millimeters gap between the back reflector and the main driven element um, anywhere between 14 up to uh, 17 millimeters is fine you basically get uh, you know the reflected waves of the back here and the waves coming from the main driven element then combining constructively in uh, this uh, kind of area here which is uh, around the 14 to 17 millimeter mark um, any uh, less than that and then they'll combine deconstructively and you won't get the gain that um, you know one of these single backwards can put out um, as far as the distance goes for constructive uh, waves coming together uh, there are different uh, stages where this happens it uh, will happen a lot longer than uh, the 14 to 17 millimeters and it will also happen uh, quite close as well to the uh, reflector it's a pretty interesting thing especially if you uh, can visualize this using something like uh, sonic waves I've seen an experiment before where uh, you can visualize uh, the waves coming together constructively uh, using uh, a sonic emitter I may do that experiment in a future video but uh, I always aim for around 15 uh, millimeters distance and then I know I'm in the sweet spot so the SMA connector is soldered on the back there as you can see I've just run solder down the sides here and uh, what I've done now I've pre-tinned the little pin in the uh, that we put in the SMA connector and I've pre-tinned the copper tube on the biquad here so I'm going to make those two together just by adding a little bit of heat and then this I'll just uh, solder to the uh, back reflector here and then uh, we've got the biquad constructed
So I've got all the connections to the bi quad soldered in place now, so we have, have effectively got a working antenna, and I've just epoxied the uh, elements here and here to these uh, little uh, posts that I've made here to give it some support. I mean, if you don't have any of these uh, nylon posts here, you can always use some uh, wooden dowel. I've used that in the past and just epoxy that into place just to add a little bit of a support. Uh, you just need to find something that's non-conductive and plastic and uh, wood. Something like that works really well. So now the antenna is effectively finished, but before we move on to paint, I want to think about how we're going to support this. And uh, supporting it in a tripod would be the best option. I mean, you could connect it up to your uh, alpha card or similar and just have it like that and just prop it up and support it, uh, you know, with uh, whatever you've got lying around. But uh, a tripod will be the uh, best option. Now, these are the tripods that I uh, get to give away with some of my antennas. And uh, for the last year or so, they've been coming with these uh, phone holders and I've been saving them um, because I thought, you know, it, it's no point in putting these in the bin. There's a lot of useful parts on these, especially just the uh, thread that's down in there. So I want to look at uh, modifying one of these so we can permanently connect it to the uh, bi-quad here. And then we've got the threads for the uh, tripod already inserted. So I've got another one here and I've disassembled the top part. We don't need that. And I've marked off uh, where I want to cut this. I basically want to make uh, two legs and uh, a cut a groove in between these that the PCB can slip in between and then I can epoxy it down in place. So I'm going to get the Dremel, cut it off here and here and then uh, try and modify a couple of grooves in here that the PCB will slip down in between. So I've modified the phone adapter as you can see. It only took five minutes of work with the uh, Dremel. So now it will slide onto the PCB and what I can do is epoxy that in place then we've got a nice little uh, connection there that we can uh, put a tripod on and then stand it up it's a lot better than uh, you know maybe propping it up or something like that and I've also got a good use out of these now because uh, you know I didn't really want to throw them away um, I knew they'd come in useful for something in the future but uh, yeah I quite like that so I'm now getting ready to spray the little bi-quad uh, antenna and uh, I, as you saw in a previous video I used plastic dip with the little dipole antennas just dipping it in there and um, that worked out really well but uh, to dip the bi-quad is just not feasible it, it, it wouldn't uh, drip dry properly and it looked pretty messy but I've been playing around with the spray stuff which I've uh, got here it is rather expensive uh, £10 a, a can around £10 anyway uh, on eBay and um, it is really really nice stuff it sprays really easily and uh, I'm pretty pleased with this but I was in my local uh, car uh, shop you know they sell the spray cans and spare parts and spark plugs and that sort of thing and uh, he's a friend of mine I was telling him about this stuff and uh, he mentioned this now this is a uh, rubberized undercoating for cars and I've had a little play with this and uh, this is also really nice stuff it's uh, a few pounds cheaper uh, than the plastic dip and you can see here it's in a bigger can as well so it's better value for money but uh, it's really really nice um, you know when you compare it to the plastic dip uh, they both spray on uh, you know about the same same kind of thickness and same kind of finish so uh, I'm going to spray the little bi quad with this stuff this is the rubberized uh, undercoating it's in black I think you can get a few other different colors as well but um, that's what I'm going to use it as and uh, this is really nice and it's a lot cheaper than the plastic dip so this is the uh, finished backward antenna now then and it's got that uh, rubberized coating on there it's really durable stuff I do like the uh, finish on that I'm pretty sure it's going to do a uh, really good job protecting it and it won't scratch off as easily as uh, say paint would so I've decided to test the uh, little bi-quad here next to uh, an alpha panel antenna. Now this alpha panel antenna operates at around 7 dBi. It uh, used to be a freebie that they would give away with their alpha cards but now they tend to sell them separately probably to cut costs. But um, the bi-quad if it's constructed correctly should operate at about 9 dBi so it should be just that little bit more powerful than the alpha card and basically we've got two 
identical alpha network cards as well so it should be a fair test so let's give them both a scan then and see what we can see so already the bi quad is picking up uh, lots more uh, wireless network uh, points from my lab here now I am pretty isolated in this lab it's uh, quite a thick brick construction with a big metal door but the bi quad does have a much wider beam width than the uh, panel alpha uh, alpha antenna there I'm not quite sure what the alpha is but I do know it's uh, much more narrower than the bi quad so let's pick on a uh, couple of uh, wireless access points here we've got uh, Wi-Fi repeater and we've got Wi-Fi repeater on the bi quad and you can see that on the bi quad it's pulling in about 76 percent signal strength now on the uh, alpha it's dropping in and out but uh, it's still pulling in about 70 percent of signal strength so it's just that little bit down on the bi quad which makes a lot of sense between the uh, 7 dbi and uh, hopefully 9 dbi of the bi quad and again we can pick on this access point here which is called bond care at the moment I'm pulling in 72% and if I click on the same one on the uh, alpha panel antenna at the moment it's dropped its connection but uh, its highest signal strength at that uh, particular access point was 70% so a little bit down on the bi quad again and if you go through the majority of these uh, signal strengths where the uh, bi quad has picked up the same uh, access points as the uh, alpha panel antenna there you can see there's a few percent uh, you know better signal strength with the bi quad over the panel antenna so the bi quad is definitely operating slightly higher gain than the uh, 7 dbi and you can in, you can uh, you know improve the gain of the bi quad with its front to back ratio if instead of using uh, the single sided pcb like i have if you used a uh, solid sheet of copper or aluminium uh, that would improve its uh, forward gain as well so you wouldn't be wasting as much power behind the antenna you'll be forcing all that power forward so that would improve things a little bit as well but it would make the antenna a little bit heavier so i uh, hope you enjoyed uh, the video the uh, bi quad the simple uh, bi quad bow tie element of this is uh, one of my favorite antennas and uh, you know it's just a good all-round antenna for uh, virtually everything it doesn't break any records with distance of course you know there's uh, antennas that can uh, uh, go a lot further than uh, a simple uh, single uh, bi quad element like this I mean you can build a double bi quad element to get a, a little bit more gain out of it but uh, as a good all-rounder you really can't knock it so if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and any comments or questions drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.